Representation theory of finite groups, lecture 20, subsequences. In the previous lecture, we looked at the robinson shenstedt correspondence provided by Shenstedt's insertion algorithm. Let us start by recalling how Shenstedt algorithm works. First, if you want to insert a new positive integer b in a standard generalized Young tableau of the row shape, which contains a1, a2, and so on, a k, written in the natural order, then we do the following. If b is greater than a k, then we just attach the box b at the end of this row and output also the total stop sign. If b is smaller than a k, then we find the minimal of the a s's, which is still greater than b, Let's assume that this is AI, and we replace this AI by B in our row. So then our output consists of a new row where B replaced AI and a new number AI. With this in mind, we can now recall the insertion algorithm of how we insert a new positive integer B into a standard generalized Young tableau T of partition shape. So we start by inserting the integer b in the first from the top row of t. If the outcome reads stop, if we get the global stop sign, then we stop. If not, then the outcome changes the first row of t and gives us a new number c, which is bumped from the first row by b. Then we try to insert c in the second row. Then if we get stop, then we stop. Otherwise, we change the second row and we have a new number D. And we continue going down the rows until we get the stop sign. The robinson shenstedt correspondence, which is based on this algorithm, then can be described as follows. So let sigma be a permutation in Sn, which maps 1 to A1, 2 to A2, and so on. Denote by P0 of sigma and Q0 of sigma the empty Young tableaus. And then for i from 1 to n, we define recursively the insertion tableau Pi of sigma, which is obtained from Pi minus 1 of sigma by inserting Ai using Shenstedt's insertion algorithm. And we define the recording tableau Qi of sigma which is obtained from qi minus 1 of sigma by adding the box numbered with i at the position where a new box is added into pi of sigma relative to pi minus 1 of sigma. The image of sigma under the robinson shenstedt correspondence is the pair consisting of pn of sigma and qn of sigma. Recall that for any partition lambda in n, we have the set SYT lambda of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda. So the robinson shenstedt correspondence then asserts that the map RS defined above is a bijection from the symmetric group to the disjoint union over all partitions lambda of N of the Cartesian square of the set SYT lambda. Today, we will look at increasing and decreasing subsequences for permutations. Let sigma be a permutation in Sn as above. Definition, an increasing subsequences for sigma is the following. Assume that we have increasing indices i1, i2, and so on ik between 1 and n. If the corresponding images under sigma, ai1, ai2, and so on, aik, also increase, then this sequence is called an increasing subsequence for sigma. So it's just an increasing subsequence in the second row of sigma. Similarly, if the sequence ai1, ai2, and so on, aik decreases, then it is called the decreasing subsequence for sigma. For example, if we look at the following permutation in S9, which has the second row consisting of 
4839216567. Then for the sigma, the sequence 467 is increasing because we have 4 here, 6 here, and 7 here. They appear in the increasing order in the second row of sigma. Similarly, the sequence 357 is increasing. We have 357. The sequence 4321 is decreasing, and the sequence 965 is also decreasing. The main aim for today is to understand what is the maximal length for a monotone, which means for an increasing or a decreasing subsequence of a given permutation. Recall again, then to each sigma in Sn, Shenstedt's algorithm associate an insertion tableau P sigma, which is Pn of sigma, and a recording tableau Q sigma, which is Qn of sigma. The main result for today is the following theorem by Shenstedt. Let sigma be a permutation in Sn. Claim 1. The length of a longest increasing subsequence for sigma equals the length of the top row in P of sigma. Claim 2. The length of a longest decreasing subsequence for sigma equals the height of the leftmost column of P sigma. So both these results were proved in the original paper by Shenstedt called longest increasing and decreasing subsequences from 1961. So let us start by proving claim 1. For this, we will need the following lemma. For sigma in Sn, consider the construction of P of sigma via Shenstedt algorithm. For an index i between 1 and n, at the ith step of the algorithm, we are trying to insert the number ai, which is the value of sigma at i, into the intermediate insertion tableau pi minus 1 of sigma. By Shenstedt's algorithm, the element ai enters the first row at some position. So either at the end or it bumps some element from that row. So let us denote by alpha i the horizontal position at which AI enters the first row. So for example, if AI is equal to nine and our first row is two, four, six, and eight, then we append nine at the end of this row. So this is position number five. So in this case, alpha I is equal to five. Second example, if AI is equal to five and we try to insert it into the row two, four, six, eight, then 5 will bump 6 from this row. So it will enter the row at position 3. So in this case, alpha i is equal to 3. And now our key lemma for any sigma in Sn and any i between 1 and n, the number alpha i coincides with the length of a longest increasing subsequence of sigma that terminates at a i. Proof of lemma. So we prove this lemma by induction on i. The basis of the induction, i is equal to 1, is obvious. So let us establish the induction step from i minus 1 to i. Assume that at the i's step of our algorithm, a i enters the first row at position m. Let us first establish existence of an increasing subsequence of length m, which terminates at a i. So assume that when a i enters the first row at position m, we have the element a j at position m minus 1 in this first row. So by inductive assumption, there is an increasing subsequence of lengths m minus 1 terminating at a j. And since j is smaller than i, because a j was already in the insertion tableau, and since AI is greater than AJ, this is because AI enters the row at position M while AJ is at position M minus 1. So adding AI to this increasing subsequence, which terminates at AJ, produces an increasing subsequence of lengths M terminating at AI. So this establishes existence. Now let us prove 
that no increase in subsequence of lengths greater than m terminates at a i. So assume that such subsequence exists and let a j be its penultimate term. Then the longest increase in subsequence terminating at a j has lengths at least m. Therefore, by induction, a j enters the first row at position at least m. During the steps between j and i, the elements at that position can only decrease. So all elements in that position will be a j or smaller, in particular, they will be smaller than a i. But then it means that a i cannot enter the first row at position m, because there is a position greater than or equal to m, which consists of elements smaller than a i. Corollary, the length of the longest increase in subsequence for sigma equals the length of the top row in p of sigma. And this is exactly the first claim of our theorem. So in order to prove the second claim, we need to do some work. First, recall the usual operation of transposition. So we have the transposition of the matrix. So this is a symmetry with respect to the main diagonal, which swaps rows and columns of the matrix. So if we consider a Young diagram just as a part of the matrix, then we can restrict this transposition to Young diagrams and define transposition of Young diagrams. So, for example, if we transpose the Young diagram of the size 4, 2, 1, we will get the Young diagram of the size 3, 2, 1, 1. So, we just swap rows and columns. We make a symmetry with respect to the main diagonal. And similarly, we can transpose generalized standard Young tableaus. So, if we have the following generalized standard Young tableau of shape 4 to 1, which has 1, 2, 3, 4 in the first row, 5, 6 in the second row, and 7 in the third row. When we transpose it, we get 1, 5, 7, 2, 6, 3, and 4. And similarly to matrices, transposition swaps columns and rows. And the transposition is denoted as usual by little t. Next, let us discuss column insertion. Observation, we made one controversial choice when we introduced Shenstedt algorithm. Shenstedt algorithm is defined using rows. So let us denote by R sub B of T the insertion of an integer beam into a tableau T. But in the diagrams, we have rows and columns and question, can we do the same thing using columns? And of course, we can define a similar algorithm which proceeds with respect to columns. So for example, if we try to column insert the number 2 into the generalized Young tableau of shape 3 to 1, which has 1, 5, 7 in the first row, 4, 9 in the second, and 6 in the third row, then we will get the following. So let us denote by A sub B insertion of A into B's column. So we start with our Young diagram 1, 5, 7, 4, 9, and 6, and we try to insert 2 into the first column. So in the first column we have 1, 4, and 6, so 2 is supposed to bump 4. So we replace 4 by 2 in the first column, and we have the tableau 1, 5, 7, 2, 9, 6. And two bumped four, so now we need to insert four into the second column. So the second column is five and nine, so four will bump five, and so we get the tableau one, four, seven, two, nine, and six. And four bumped five, so now we have to insert five into the third column. So the third column is seven, which means that five bumps seven. So we get 1, 4, 5, 2, 9, 6. And now we have to insert our bumped 7 into the fourth column, which is empty. So we just add 7 at that column. So the outcome is a tableau 1, 4, 5, 7, 2, 9, 6. And we denote by C sub B of T the column insertion of B into a tableau T. It is very clear that by construction, 
column inserting B into a tableau T is the same as first transposing T, then row inserting B into T, and then transposing back. So using the column insertion, we can, of course, define the column version of the robinson shenstead correspondence. Let us denote by RSC the column analog of the robinson shenstead map. So it takes a permutation in SN and outputs a pair of standard Young tableaus of the same partition shape, where the partition lambda, the shape of this tableau, is a partition of N. And it is very easy to see, directly from the definition, then for any sigma in Sn, if the robinson chance the row correspondent of sigma is P of sigma and Q of sigma, then the column robinson chance correspondent of sigma is P of sigma transposed, Q of sigma transposed. And we have the column version of the robinson chance that correspondence, the column map RSC, from Sn to the disjoint union of pairs of standard Young tableaus of the same shape is a bijection. And why are we interested in this column version of the robinson shenstedt correspondence? Is because of the following principal observation due to Shenstead. The claim is that the row and column insertions commute. Exactly it means the following. So let T be a standard generalized Young tableau of partition shape, and A and B be two different positive integers that do not occur in T. Then, starting with T and column inserting B, and then row inserting A, we get the same outcome that we get if we start with T, row insert A first, and then column insert B. So it doesn't matter whether you row insert first or you column insert first. So here is the idea of the proof. So we need to compare the outcomes of first column inserting and then row inserting and vice versa at some tableau T. So if the bumping passes of the column insertion of B in T and the row insertion of A in T never cross, which means never displays the same box, then the claim is obvious. One really needs to study the case when the bumping passes of column insertion of B into T and the row insertion of A into T displays the same box. And one needs to look what happens to that box. So it is a case-by-case -case analysis of several cases, and all of them basically reduce to the following situation, when we row and column insert into the empty tableau, which kind of determines the corner of that common box which we displace. So if A is smaller than B and we column insert B into the empty tableau, we will just get the box B. And then when we row insert A, then A will bump B, so we get the first row A and the second row B. So similarly, if you start from the empty tableau and the row insert A, we just get A. And then if we column insert B, B is greater than A, so we just append B at the end of the first column. We get the same result. Similarly, if A is greater than B, then column inserting B and row inserting A, or vice versa, produces a row with B on the left and A on the right. For a full proof, I refer to Shenstedt's paper or Proposition 3 to 2 in Sagan's book. So now let us define the so-called reversed permutation. For a permutation sigma in Sn, the reversed permutation sigma upper r is defined as follows. The value of sigma upper r at i is equal to the value of sigma at n plus 1 minus i for all i from 1 to n. In other words, this means the following. So if sigma has the second row consisting of a1, a2, and so on, a n, then the second row of sigma upper r consists of a n, a n minus 1, and so on, a1. So sigma r is obtained from sigma 
by swapping the second row. So for example, if we reverse the permutation 3, 7, 6 to 1, 4, 5, we will get the permutation 5, 4, 1 to 6, 7, 3. And let us observe that this operation swaps increasing and decreasing subsequences of the permutation. In other words, increasing subsequences of sigma become decreasing subsequences of sigma r and vice versa. The key observation for the proof of the second part of our main theorem is the following description of the insertion tableau for the reversed permutation. For any permutation sigma in Sn, the insertion tableau for sigma r is equal to the transpose of the insertion tableau for sigma. Proof. So let sigma be the permutation with a1, a2, and so on, a n in the second row. Let us know that if we row insert anything into the empty tableau, it is the same thing as the column inserting the same number into the empty tableau. You just get the box with A. Great. So now to prove this proposition, we do the following computation. So the insertion tableau for sigma r, by definition, is the following tableau. So sigma r has a n, a n minus 1, and so on, a 1. So the second row of sigma is swapped. So to obtain p of sigma r, we start from the empty tableau, and then we first row insert a n, so this is the leftmost element in sigma r, then we row insert a n minus 1, and so on, and finally we row insert a 1. Great. But when we row insert a n into the empty tableau, this is the same thing as to column insert a n into the empty tableau. But column insertions and row insertions commute, so, so we can move c a n out all the way to the left of our expression. And now we have to row insert a n minus 1 into the empty tableau. But this is the same as column inserting a n minus 1 into the empty tableau. And again, column and row insertions commute, so we can move C a n minus 1 all the way until it is blocked by C a n. So we have C a n, C a n minus 1, and then R a 1, and so on, R a n minus 2. And then all this applied to the empty tableau. So we proceeded for all row insertions, and the outcome will be column insertion of a n, after column insertion of a n minus 1 and so on, so starting from the column insertion of a1 into the empty tableau. But this is by definition the transpose of p sigma. So this proves the claim. Great, now we can describe the lengths of the maximal decreasing subsequence. So we need to prove that the lengths of the longest decreasing subsequence for sigma equals the height of the leftmost column of the insertion tableau P of sigma. So we know that decreasing subsequences for sigma are exactly the increasing subsequences for sigma R. So using the first part of the main theorem, the length of the longest increasing subsequence for sigma R equals the length of the top row in P of sigma R. But we have just proved that P of sigma R is equal to the transpose of p of sigma. So the top row of p of sigma r is a transpose of the leftmost column in p of sigma. And this implies our claim. So here is an example. So let sigma be the permutation 5, 3, 6, 2, 8, 4, 7, 1. So let us compute p of sigma. So we start from the empty tableau. Inserting 5, we just get 5. Inserting 3, 3 bumps 5, we get 3 on top 5 in the second row. Inserting 6, we just append 6 in the first row, so we have 3, 6, and 5. Next, we insert 2. Inserting 2, 2 bumps 3, 3 bumps 5, so we get 2, 6, 3, and 5. Inserting 8, 8 is greater than 6, so we just add 8 in the first row. 2, 6, 8, 
3 and 5. Insert in 4, so 4 bumps 6, and 6 is greater than 3. So the first row is 2, 4, 8, the second row is 3, 6, and the third row is 5. Next, we insert 7. 7 bumps 8 from the first row, and 8 is appended in the second row. So we get 2, 4, 7, 3, 6, 8, and 5. And finally, we insert 1. 1 bumps 2, 2 bumps 3, and 3 bumps 5. So we get 1, 4, 7, 2, 6, 8, 3, and 5. So the reverse permutation is 1, 7, 4, 8, 2, 6, 3, 5. So let us compute the insertion tableau for sigma r. So we first insert 1, we get 1. Next, we insert 7. 7 is greater than 1, so we just get 1, 7. Then we insert 4, 4 bumps 7, so we get 1, 4, and 7. Next, we insert 8. 8 is greater than 4, so we get 1, 4, 8, and 7. Then we insert 2. 2 bumps 4, 4 bumps 7. We get 1 to 8, 4, and 7. Next, we insert 6. 6 bumps 8, and 8 goes into the second row. 1 to 6, 4, 8, 7. Next, we insert 3. 3 bumps 6, 6 bumps 8, and 8 goes into the third row. So we get 1 to 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. And finally, we insert 5. 5 is greater than 3, so it just goes into the first row. So we get 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, 7, 8. And now we readily see that the insertion tableau for sigma r is a transpose of the insertion tableau for sigma. And so we see that the insertion tableau for sigma has three numbers in the first row, and we have an increasing sequence, for example, 2, 4, 7 the longest one. We have four numbers in the first column, and we have the decrease in sequence 5, 3, 2, 1. Okay, let us finish with some problems and questions. Compute the image of the permutation 6, 8, 2, 7, 5, 3, 1, 9, 4 under the column version of the robinson shenstedt correspondence. Question 2. Proof with all details that for any sigma in Sn, the column version of robinson shenstedt applied to sigma is equal to the transpose of the usual robinson shenstedt of sigma. Transpose should be commuted component-wise. Question 3. Compute the inverse image under the column robinson shenstedt map of the pair 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, and 1, 3, 2, 5, 4 of standard Young tableaus of shape 2 to 1. Question 4. Find an example of sigma such that q of sigma r is not equal to q of sigma transposed. Question 5. Determine all sigma in S4 for which the insertion tableau for sigma r is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Thank you very much and see you next time.